hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning with our heads bowed and our hearts humble. We come before you humbly, Lord God, because you are Lord. You are Lord of lords and King of kings. And Lord, we come thanking you. We come praising you. We come giving you glory. Hallelujah. Glory and honor that is due unto your name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your grace. It was your mercy and your grace that woke us up this morning, and we thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning and for starting us off on a new day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come into your house to worship you, to praise you one more time. Thank you, Lord God, because you've been so good. You've been so faithful. Thank you, Lord God. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bless each and every soul that is under the sound of my voice, whether they are in person or whether they are online listening to the service. Bless, Lord. Meet us where we are. You know what each one of us need. Meet every need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy of all the honor, glory. Hallelujah and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless your people here, there, and everywhere as we gather together, hallelujah, on one accord to worship you. Bless our pastor and our first lady, wherever they are, Lord God. Give them grace. Give them mercy. Bring them back home safe and sound. Anoint them the more, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless our speaker. Bless our uh, uh, praise and worshipers. Bless all of those that have to come forth in the service. Bless, Lord God. Our cups are out. We need you, Lord. We're looking for a word from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your people, Lord God. Run from heart to heart and breast to breast. Run up and down these aisles. Save, set free, deliver, heal in the name of Jesus. Do what only you can do. Hallelujah. Perform miracles in this house. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, it is so. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our scripture for this morning is Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am also here to do the welcome. I praise the Lord for the opportunity to welcome the people of God into his house. Glory to God. Uh, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Asted and Herndon, our First Lady, Mother Myrna Herndon, our church mother, Mother T.L. Loggins, and our assistant uh, church mother, Mother Juanita Payne, and all the beautiful saints of God. We welcome you in the house of the Lord. We welcome you to uh, praise the Lord, uh, bless the Lord, run the house, however you want to do it. We ask that you will praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
Hallelujah. Everybody feeling today? Everybody feeling good? My name is Deacon Reginald Robinson, and for a quick thought, I just want to talk about joy. Amen? It's a real quick thought. Amen? Uh, we do have a main speaker. Amen? A capable speaker. Amen? But I'm just going to deal with joy, you know. Uh, even now, you know, uh, we, we know that uh, and Nehemiah talks about the joy of the Lord being our strength, amen. And a lot of people don't really understand how that came about. Uh, you know, Ezra was talking to uh, the, the, the children of Israel, and, um, you know, they were wondering, you know, why the Lord was dealing with them in that fashion because they felt convicted when the word came out. And, um, you know, they felt their spirits wasn't right. But God still, you know, because they were his children, you know, he proclaimed that. And, you know, I just thought about that even this day, you know, as believers in the church, you know, we have that same, although it's years later, we have that same uh, thing that we're dealing with. You know, our day-to-day -day sometimes get us caught up, and we don't rest in the joy of the Lord. Amen? We get so caught up in, in, in the world and we don't realize that as a believer, first, uh, going back into Galatians 5, 22, uh, dealing with uh, the fruits of the spirit. Um, the, fruit, the fruit of the spirit is something as believers that we all must have in us. Amen. And, and one of them is joy. And, and so when we deal with that, um, in fact, let me just read that, that scripture for you. Y'all have a little patience with me this morning. Huh? I ain't going to be before you long because we, like I said, we do have a speaker. Amen. And so she has it up there. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. It's another one in there. Amen. Meekness, temperance against such there is no law, amen. And that last word, such is no law, basically mean there's nothing wrong with that, amen. That's right there. Such is no law, I mean that's God right there. And so you, if you're walking in that, you on point, amen. And, and so we need those things to show that we are Christ-like. Those are the things that God has given to the believers, amen. And so we must understand that in this walk, we're going to have trials and tribulations and different things are going to happen. But the joy of the Lord should be our strength. Amen. And so no matter what we go through throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout our lives, when this body start giving out on you, you start getting sick, uh, your, your money get funny, you know, the joy of the Lord is still your strength. Amen. And so with the joy of the Lord, we don't need no music. Amen. We, we got the joy in us. And so that's all the music that we need. Amen. And so we just need to remember that God is our ever-present help, amen, in the time of need. And we need to look towards him, amen. And so when we talk about joy, we must remember that the world didn't give us this joy, amen. Once we accepted Christ, he downloaded that thing in us, amen. And so since the world didn't give it to us and it was Christ that gave it to us, Christ is the only one that can take it. And he don't do nothing like that, amen. And so we know when we dealing with the world, we have to relinquish it, amen. And so when your joy is gone, when you got that joy and peace which is gone, and I like to put them two together, amen. But when it's gone, that means you relinquished it. You gave it away, amen. And we should never, never give our joy away. I, you know, and I'm going to leave you with this. One, one, one of the greatest uh, encourages, I think, in the Bible was Job, amen. And I tell you, you talking about who went through, and he still had his joy. Can you imagine being rich, and you lose everything, and he still had his joy? Can you imagine being married, happily married, and a wife comes against everything that you know, but he still had his joy? Could you imagine losing your children, amen? and still have your joy and, and god is so awesome because he restores amen. amen amen 
And so when you have that joy, you hold on to that joy that only God can give you. He'll restore you in your times of trouble. Amen. And so I just need y'all to remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. At this time, please stand for Deaconess Shauna Griffin and Sister uh, Angelica Herndon as they come with praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Come on, let's thank him for his joy. Hallelujah. Let's thank him for his joy. Hallelujah. Let's thank him for being here on today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. How great is our God.
you, Jesus. Thank you for being so great. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so awesome. You're the name above all names. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We love you, Lord. How great, how great. He's the great I am. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You you are the great I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. be close close by your side where heaven is real and death is a lie I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one singing hallelujah holy holy God almighty the great God Almighty, the great I am. Hallelujah. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world and hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again. And singing as one, singing hallelujah. Holy, 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 God Almighty, God Almighty, the great I am. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? None beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am. The great I am. before you the demons run in fear at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great i am the great i am the great i am Holy 
the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God, the great I am. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And at this time, it is my privilege to present our speaker for the hour. A woman of God. A teacher. I said a woman of God. Okay? She's not one of them out there on the street doing all kind of ungodly things. A woman of God. A teacher of the word of God. Glory to God, an anointed vessel of the Lord, none other than our own missionary Renee Honore. Say amen for her as she comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Amen. Amen. Does anybody feel blessed in here Amen. on today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come this morning to say we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, I thank you for this great opportunity, Lord, to stand be behind this sacred desk. Oh God, continue to bless our pastor, strengthen him, encourage his heart on today in the name of Jesus. God, use him mightily for your glory and for your honor, Lord. God, speak through me on today, oh God. These are thy people, Lord, the sheep of thy pasture, Lord. Father, we do love you. We praise and honor you on today. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable this day in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And so our scripture on today is going, well, actually, we have a couple scriptures. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn over to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, beginning at the eighth verse. So we have a couple sets of scriptures today. 2 Kings 4, beginning at verse number 8. And it reads, And it fell on a day 
that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. Yes, you may stand, please, for the reading of the word. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Jehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto her, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Jehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, I want to just summarize uh, what we just read. Glory to God. I want to summarize and just kind of, let's kind of just go back through these scriptures. And so... Um, Verse number eight says, it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem. I want you to notice that God chose not to give this woman a name. Amen. He chose not to give this woman a name. She's only described as a great woman. How many of you know that when the Lord says you're great, you are great? Amen. And the Bible goes on to say that as often as the man of God passed by, she constrained him, that is, she urged him to come in and to dine with them. Amen? Come in and eat bread. And so that we see that she was hospitable, right? Now, we're talking about this Shunammite woman. She doesn't have a name. God didn't choose to give her a name, but she, we see some of the characteristics of her. Amen? In verse 9, she perceives that... Uh, this is a holy man of God. Hallelujah. And so she consults with her husband. Now, she doesn't take it upon herself to make this decision. She consults with her husband. Say, you know what? Let's add a little room. Let's put a little room on, a room addition, right? We all know about a room addition, right? And so uh, they uh, put, build this room, add this room on, put a little bit of furniture in there. And uh, so when in her doing this, she recognizes the need of the prophet, right? And I want to just say right here that the, uh, when you see a need for the man or woman of God, you know, you don't got to go running to them asking them, uh, do you need this? Do you need that? Just go ahead and fulfill that need. Amen? Go ahead. You don't got to ask Pastor, Pastor, do you need some water? Well, you know he drink water, right? So just go ahead and get him some water, right? And put it in there and just go ahead and be a blessing to the man of God. Amen. Well, it comes to pass that one day the prophet is in this little room and he tells his servant, you know what he says, uh, call the woman, right? And so he called her and the Bible says she came and she stood before him. Now I want you to notice in verse 13 how the prophet does not directly speak to the woman, but he speaks to her through his servant. Amen. You all pick up on that? And so he tells the servant, you know what, uh, tell this woman that she's been so careful for us, right? She's done so much. What is it that uh, I can do for you? What kind of need do you have that I can fulfill? Do you want me to speak to the king? Or do you want me to speak to the captain of the host, right? And the Bible says that she answered, I dwell among my own people. 
right? That's what the word says. Another translation says, I have a home among my own people. Amen. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to just pause right here and say, you know what? The best thing you can do if somebody asks you, what can I do for you? The best response you can give is say, pray for me. Amen. Right? Oh, I know y'all don't want to wait. Wait a minute now, Sister Renee. I would probably say, uh, you know, maybe uh, boost my bank account up to six figures. <laughs> you know, yeah. that would do me real good, right? Or uh, some of you might say, you know what, uh, some of the men might say, or some of the women too, might say, you know what, I like that three-wheel uh, spider trike that I see going down the street, right? Y'all can talk to me later if you don't know what it is, right? Amen. Glory to God. You know, I can see myself tooling around town in that little spider trike, you know, but guess what? You can't drive that trike in the wintertime. That's just a sidebar, right? Okay. Amen. And so uh, she, she, I want you to notice the spirit of humility that she had, right? When the man of God asked her what, what he can do for her, she merely replies I'm okay yeah. right you know we might say today you know what I'm cool I got everything I need I'm all right everything is you know is is hunky-dory right so to speak but she says she didn't want anything amen she didn't want anything in verse 14, uh, the man of God, he asked his servant. Now, at first he told his servant to ask her. And then he says, you know what, what, I'm going to turn to my servant, ask my servant, Jehazi, what can be done for her? Yes. Right? And I want to say right here that if you are an adjutant to the man or the woman of God, you need to have a spirit of discernment as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to have a spirit of discernment as well, right? And the Bible says that Jehazi answered, well, she doesn't have a child, right? Uh, uh, and he said, now the Bible said, I didn't say it, and her husband is old, right? I didn't say it. It's right here in the word, right? The Bible said that Jehazi answered, says she has no child, and her husband is old. And so what I want to point out with that scripture is that, you know, Jehazi recognized that uh, because her husband was old, if he died, she would be left a widow, yes. right? And in those days, that uh, uh, a child was expected to take care of the widow, take care of the mother if the husband died, right? So you see the spiritual discernment that Je Jehazi, the servant, had, right? Now, the Bible uh, doesn't mention that the woman was old. You all follow me? The Bible doesn't say the woman was old. It said the man was old, right? Now, uh, in Luke chapter 1, uh, the Bible said that Zacharias and Elizabeth were both well stricken in age, right? But apparently, this woman, uh, this Shunammite woman, was still of child bearing age. Amen. And so uh, the prophet tells his servant again to call her, call the Shunammite woman. And she comes and she stands in the door, and the prophet gives her the word. He gives her the word and he tells her about this season. Let's look at verse 16 again. He tells her, he says, about this season. That's uh, 2 Kings 4 and verse 16. He said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Yeah. Right? And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Amen. You know, last Sunday in our Sunday school lesson, we talked about uh, the angel that appeared to um, uh, Sarah and told her that she was going to have a child. And we talked about how Sarah laughed. You know, she kind of, uh, we don't know what kind of laugh it was, but you know what, how many of you know that sometimes you can be given a word or sometimes somebody can say something to you and it's just so unbelievable. Yeah. It's just so, you know, it catches you off guard. And so your response might be just off the cuff, right? And so that's the way it was with Sarah. She just kind of laughed like, uh, well, however her laugh was, she laughed, right? You know, and so it was just so unbelievable to her. Uh, but I want you to notice that this woman, she 
was so respectful to uh, the man of God, right? Uh, she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, right? She gave him that respect. She said, now look at here now, don't lie to me. Right? Oh, I'm just going to say it the way we would say it, right? You know, I, let me paraphrase. Is that all right? Right? Don't lie to me now, right? Or some of us might say, no, you pulling my leg, you know, right? Or you, you know what? You snowballing a sister, right? You know, we got all kind of ways that we could say that. But she gave that man of God the respect and the honor that was due him. She said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God. I'm giving you the honor, give you the respect, right? But she, 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 she said, do not lie unto thine handmaid, yeah. right? Come on now, don't, don't play with me now, right? Don't toy with a sister, right? Don't do it now because you know what? My husband and I, we have tried for so long, you know, to have a child and it has not come to pass. And here you telling me now that my husband is old, that I am going to have a child? Yeah. Oh my, 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 oh my God. But you know what? The other thing I want to point out is that I want you to notice how complacent she had become in her situation, right? And you know what, we can be in our situations for so long, hallelujah. We can be in the same situation for so long until we just feel like, you know what, what's the use? We can throw up our hands. We can be in the same job for so long. No prospect of advancement. Glory to God. We can be sick in our bodies for so long. No prospect of getting well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our finances can be down so much. We can be so far in debt until we cannot see ourselves getting out. Right? Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. So she had just accepted. You know what? I'm childless. This is the way it's going to be. Right? And isn't that the way we are sometimes? That I'm in this situation. This is the way it's going to be. But I want to tell you today, I came to tell you that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. Let's read verse 17 again. It says, and the woman conceived and bear a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. I want you to notice how God, how God moved this woman from complacency to completeness. Amen. Glory to God. He moved her from complacency to completeness. And that's what I came to tell you today. Those of you in the audience, the visible audience and those uh, watching virtually, I came to bring you a word today to tell you that God is not through blessing you. God ain't through blessing you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to say that again. God is not through blessing you. Oh, that's right. That's a good place to give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's an excellent place to praise our God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it doesn't matter how long we've been in a certain situation. My God, your God, our God is not through blessing you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so you know what? We're not going to read any further in that chapter, but uh, I want you to continue to read the rest of that chapter on your own. And you'll see that uh, uh, the child goes out to the field. He's grown up a little bit, he goes out to the field one day and uh, he cries, my head, my head, and you know, to his father. His father says, take this child to his mother. And so they take the child to the mother and the child ends up dying. All right, and so it, um, the mother takes the child up to this very same room, hallelujah, up to this room that they had added on for the man of God. And she lays the child on the bed of the man of God. Well, the man of God was not there. And so the uh, Shunammite woman, she gets her servant and she says, you know what, let's go drive and don't slack off this driving because I got to get to the man of God. Woo, hallelujah. How many got to get to the man of God sometime? Oh, yes, Lord. 
Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so she lays the child on the man of God's bed, and she goes to get him. He comes back with her, and uh, he actually revives the child. Amen. The Bible said that, you know, he stretched himself on the child, and the child became warm. And the child sneezed several times, right? And so uh, God restored this child's life through the man of God, through Elisha. Now, I told you that we had a couple uh, sets of scripture. Uh, if you still have your Bible, was open and I hope you do. Second Kings chapter 8. Let's turn over there real quick. Second Kings chapter 8. Amen. And so I'm just going to basically paraphrase uh, these scriptures. Amen. I won't be before you long. I'm almost done. In 2 Kings chapter 8, beginning at verse 1, it says, Then spake Elijah unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn, for the Lord hath called for a famine. And so we see that uh, Elisha and the Shunammite woman, they have another encounter. Amen. And Elisha tells her, you know what? Get out of this land. Go stay someplace, wherever you can go, because they're going to there's going to be a famine, amen? And the famine is going to last for seven years. And so the, uh, the Bible says that the woman goes, and she did after, as the uh, man of God had said, and she went with her household in verse 2. And she stayed in the land of the Philistines, right? She stayed there for seven years. At the end of seven years, she comes back, right? She comes back out of the land, and she goes forth to talk to the king to try to get her land back, right? Well, in the uh, meantime, the, uh, the servant, Jehazi, is talking with the king as the woman comes in. He's talking with the king. The king wants to know some of the miracles that um, uh, Elisha had performed. And as the servant, Jehazi, is talking, hallelujah, as he's talking with the king, in walks the woman. Yes. yes. Woo! In walks the woman with her son. Now, she, she, uh, the Jehazi was just telling the king how Elisha had raised up someone from the dead. Yeah. And in walks the woman yeah. with her son, the living proof, standing right here, right? Yeah. She walks in. I tell you, can't nobody intersect like Jesus. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Listen, you don't got to try to make nothing happen. You don't got to try to plan nothing. You don't got to try to intersect with nobody. You don't got to try to put yourself out there. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the Lord intersect for you. So nobody could have done this but our God. Hallelujah. That this man, here he is telling the king, and in walks the woman. Glory to God. It, oh, I'm so excited. You know what? Y'all don't feel my excitement out there, but I'm excited about that. You know, I am excited. And so she walks in, and the, uh, the servant turns and said, uh, King, this is the woman right here. This is her son whom uh, uh, Elisha restored to life. So the Bible says that the king asked her some questions. And if you look real quick at verse number six, it says, and when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore, woo, restore all that was hers. Come on now, restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Restore. Oh my God, can't nobody do it like, can't nobody do you like Jesus, hallelujah. Can't nobody do you like the Lord, hallelujah. Do I have anybody out here? Do I have any witnesses out here? That can't nobody do you like Jesus, hallelujah. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh my God, the Lord, this, the king restored to this woman all that she had lost. Over a period of seven years, huh? I tell you, the Cook County Assessor don't have nothing on our God. <laughs> he ain't got nothing on our God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so I thank God. We thank God for the word of God on today. Glory to God. 
Those of you that are watching virtually, may God bless you and keep you. Glory to God is our prayer. If you've been blessed by the word on today, write us and let us know. Amen. God bless you. To those of you in this house on today, glory to God. If you agree with the word of God that has gone forth on today, hallelujah, I want you to just come down. Come down to the front. Just pass on by. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And just, uh, you know what? We're going to just uh, seal that word in your hearts on today. Is that all right? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to ask my sister to assist me here. Amen. Glory to God. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah for the word of God on today. Hallelujah Temple is a religious, nonprofit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify or at our website at www.hallelujahtemple.org. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.